Cause a life like a woman giving birth Won't stop, can't stop giving them this work Bringing peace to earth, if you scared, go to church Won't stop, can't stop, leave them in the dirt Hit them where it hurts, hit them, hit them where it hurts Won't stop, can't stop, bringing peace to earth Giving laws of life like a woman giving birth Shalom, shalom, Israel. Peace and light to the children of light scattered to the four corners of the earth. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Children of Light Israelites. And today, I'm going to bring forth a particular teaching that the Most High has put on my spirit to share with you guys. It's going to be very brief. It's not um, high cinematic like I usually do, but I'm going to put this information out. So this is my transmission to you. I'd like to thank you for your wise company. So, once again, I am King Corner, our Earthman Israel from the Republic of Light, an indigenous tribe. Peace, love, truth, freedom, and justice for all creation. Shalom, Islam. So, the topic we're going to be dealing with today is going to be the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes. We are coming to the end of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And today I'm going to break down the real spiritual significance, what it is to not have leaving in your temple, okay? Most people think it's bread, but Messiah said it is the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes, the teaching of the Pharisees and scribes. And so we're going to get into that scripture, but first and foremost, I want to say all praises to the Most High, Ahaya Baha Shem Yeshaya, Rawah. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya, Allah Hayam Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya, Allah Hayam Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya, Allah Hayam Nawa Ahaya Akkad. Hero Israel, the Most High Ahaya, our power, Father and Mother is one. Selah. And so the first scripture we're going to be dealing with today is going to be Matthew chapter 16, verse 6. That's Matthew chapter 16, verses 6 through 12. And it reads, Then Yeshua said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaving of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned amongst themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? Which when Yeshua perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why do you reason amongst yourselves because you have bought no bread? Do you not understand, neither remember the five loaves of five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of four thousand and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that you do not understand that I speak not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaving of the Pharisees and scribes? Verse 12. Then they understood that how he bade them not to beware of the leaving of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes. So, even in the KJV, Messiah was showing us to beware of the teaching, the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes. So today, we're going to see what is the doctrine, what is the teaching of the Pharisees and scribes. And we're going to look into the Essene Humane Gospel to make things much more clear what is the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes? So we're going to go to the Essene Humane Gospel, chapter 56. Essene Humane Gospel, chapter 56, and it reads, And some of the scribes and Pharisees who rendered flesh and blood rituals at the temple heard his shy words and sought to entangle him in his talk and said, If thou would have put the sacrifice of sheep and oxen and birds away, to what purpose was the temple built for Solomon by the Most High? And Yeshua said unto them, It is written in the prophets, My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations, for the sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. But ye know not the pure oblation, no do you wish to know. For you have it a house of slaughter and bloodshed, and a house filled with many evils. So, we see the Pharisees and scribes who render flesh and blood rituals, right? In the temple, cutting the animals up, eating their dead flesh. This is the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes, telling you clean and unclean meat. 
where there's no way that a maggot infested parasites can be clean. There is no way. Corruption and decay can never be clean. So, we saw the Messiah showing you the teaching of the Pharisees and scribes. Let's look in the KJV and see if this can be endorsed with the KJV. Hosea chapter 8 verse 12. Hosea chapter 8 verse 12 and this information is going to show again the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes that most people can't perceive but the Most High has made it clear to us what the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes is, what the teaching of the Pharisees and scribes is. So once again, Hosea chapter 8, verses 12 through 13, and it reads, I have written to him the great things of my law, but they would count it as strange. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offering and eat it, but the Most High accepted them not, now will he remember their iniquities and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. So the Most High has told us from the beginning what he expects of us, right? He told us, he gave us the holy law. It was counted as strange. They sacrificed the innocent animals and eat their rotten flesh, okay? It was counted as sin for this reason our people are still in captivity unto Egypt of Mizraim. Okay? So, once again, the Most High has shown us from the beginning what He expects of us. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, all the way down to 31. The animals diet, our diet, everything was good. The good diet, the world was good. Everything was in peace. Everything was in harmony, right? He has shown us from the beginning what He expects of us. Yet and still, it was counted as strange. Like these Pharisees and scribes, they come up to you, cleaning not clean meat, ah, cleaning, you can eat the lamb, ah. You're eating death, okay? Whatever you put in your mouth, you're in covenant with it. You're putting life in your mouth, you choose life. Like the Most High say, Deuteronomy 30 and 19, this day I set before thee, blesses and curses, life and death, to which one you choose, scratch forth your hand. So. We're going to continue with this information, the leaving of the Pharisees and scribes, because a little bit of leaving leaves the whole lump, right? Right. So, so the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes, we're going to continue with this information, because a little bit of leaving, it leaves the whole lump, a little bit of flesh. I've had people say, well, I'm vegan for most of the time, but when the Passover come around, I eat the lamb. Yeah, it made me sick, but I eat it. How could you think that something righteous is coming from something that's making you sick? You eating parasites and maggots in your body. A little bit of leaving, leaving the whole lump, right? The doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes to eat the dead carcasses, excuse me, of the innocent animals and, and, and innocent animals and call it clean. So, let us continue with some more information. Humane Gospel, chapter 62. A seen humane gospel chapter 62 and it reads, For hands dripping with innocent blood of my creatures shall take up my name in vain and mislead many, and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees, and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees, and not the path of the pure oblation. Yea, many lies will be spoken of me in that age, things I spoke not unto ye, nor taught not. For they will lust after much flesh and sin, and their evil will mount higher than a new moon of thy season, and many will be lost. So, once again, they will follow the ways of the Pharisees. We see the whole world is following the ways of the Pharisees and scribes, knowingly and unknowingly. And some will say, well, Messiah ate a lamb. He ate fish. He ate this. He ate that. Not knowing that Constantine in 321 AD at the Council of Nicaea actually integrated paganism into the scriptures. If you look at the original scriptures, which is the gospel of the Hebrews of the Essene Humane Gospel, it's the original scriptures before Constantine put his disgusting hands in the scriptures. And so we're going to look at the KJV. A lot of people will beg to differ and say, well, Messiah ate a lamb. So 
I'm going to show you a direct contradiction out of the KJV. St. John chapter 2, verse 13 through 17. St. John chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. And it reads, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Shia went up to Jerusalem, and he found the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers sitting, excuse me, the money changers sitting. And when he had made a scourge of cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the change, changers' money and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them that sold doves, Take ye these things, Hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. So, we see right here, the KJ Fee, excuse me, the King James Version gives a brief description of the events that took place. But with newfound information on the account of the Essenes, we can look into the Essene Messiah and we can see what really transpired. So, we're going to go to the Essene Humane Gospel, chapter 66. That's the Inhumane Gospel, chapter 66. And we're going to look deeper into the story where the Messiah actually freed the doves and freed the animals and turned over the money changers. Because it gives a brief synopsis, but it doesn't go into critical detail like the Essene Inhumane Gospel. And we're going to go to chapter 66 in the Essene Inhumane Gospel. And I'm going to start from... Start from the beginning. And it came to pass that the Passover ritual of the Jews was at hand. And Yeshua went into Jerusalem from Bethany. And there he found in the temple those who sold sheep, ox, and doves. And also the money changers awaiting business. And Yeshua looked upon these men in disgust. For he was weary from their continued evil and hard-heartedness. And Yeshua proceeded to drive out all of the temple. And also loose the oxen, the sheep, and set free the doves. And then poured out the change of money and overturned the tables. And Yeshua said unto them, Thy hands are dripping with blood of innocent creatures of God. Take these things with you and turn no more and make not my father's house a house of business, buyers and sellers, money lovers. Is it not written my house is a house of prayer for all nations, all people? But look, you have made it a den of thieves and filled it with all manner of evil. And Yeshua would not allow any man to carry any vessel of blood through the temple, nor would he allow any animal to be slain for sacrifice. And Yeshua said unto them, Know ye, because of the hardness of your heart, pure innocence suffer greatly. You are from the rule of darkness, and this one light exists not. And you have become the agents of darkness and every evil. Yea, ye serve evil with a willing heart and excitement of soul. And ye shall be judged by the unholy standards. Excuse me, by thy own unholy standards. For if you know the Satan's laws, know ye also ye shall be punished by them. For with evil things Satan judged evil men of this world and chastised the children of disobedience. So, we can see right there, Messiah told them they killing up the animals, taking the blood through the temple, cooking their flesh, selling their flesh. No different than churches today. After they Christian church get up and run around and scream and shout, guess what they do? We got a plate in the back with some chicken and pork chop eating the dead animals, money changers, same thing. No different than back then, the Pharisees and scribes doing the same thing today. They call it the Christian church and they call it the Hebrew Israelites this day, okay? The doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes. Once again, hands dripping with the blood of innocent animals. Messiah called the Pharisees agents of darkness who serve evil with a willing heart and excitement. You see that? Because they're boasting your faith. Ha ha ha. Clean and unclean meat. Ah, the most I say we can eat the disgusting, rotten body of innocent animals, right? Right. Did Yeshua really eat a lamb? Did he really? Let's take a look at that. Some, 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 some would beg to differ and say, he ate the lamb, he ate this, but they can show no direct account of him eating a lamb, right? Right. So, Gospel of the Holy Twelve, 
Gospel of the Holy Twelve, Lecture 75, verses 4 through 9. Gospel of the Holy Twelve, Lecture 75, verses 4 through 9. This is going to show the account. Did Messiah eat a lamb? Verses 4 through 9. And it reads, And Yesiah said, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, and to institute the memorial of my oblation for the service and salvation of all. For behold, the hour coming with the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hand of sinners. And one of the twelve said unto him, Master, is it I? And he answered, It is to whom I give sop, and the same is he. And Iscariot said unto him, Master, behold, the unleavened bread, the mingled wine, the oil, and the herbs. But where is the lamb that Moses commanded? For Judas had brought the lamb, but Messiah forbid that it should be killed. So you see that right there? Judas bought the lamb, asking, well, what about the lamb that Moses commanded, right? You ain't going to eat the lamb? We're going to look deeper into that because Judas was the main one running to the Pharisees and scribes, right? Mocking the Messiah, right? Saying that Messiah didn't eat the flesh within the gates. The same thing with you Hebrew Israelites do today. To my, oh, you know what? He said because he ain't eat the dead body parts of a lamb. That's what Pharisees and scribes will tell you. You ain't eating the dead lamb. You sin it out. You know you breaking the law. Right? What law? The laws of Satan. They never tell you the pure oblation. The laws of the, what? The Essene Messiah. The most high power. The, the God of creation from the beginning. So, since they can't perceive that, let's look at them once again, mocking the Messiah on the cross. And this is going to be the last two scriptures. And it's going to give clear understanding that Messiah bewared us to stay away from the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes, to stay away from eating flesh, for the world will follow after it and many will be lost. As we see today, people love to eat the animals. They can't live. They feel like they can't live unless they eat dead maggots, right? Right. So, as seen Humane Gospel, chapter 75, paragraphs 1, 2, and 3. As seen Humane Gospel, chapter 75, Paragraphs 1, 2, and 3. Thus they hur hurriedly prepared Ishaya for death. And it was on the third hour amidst great confusion. They hung Ishaya on a tree. And they mocked him and spoke very blasphemy against his name. Excuse me. And spoke every blasphemy against his name. And the chief priest and the scribe said, Look, he saved the lamb, but himself he can save not. And the dealers in bread, excuse me, and the dealers in birds and beasts at the temple also reviled Yeshia by saying, Look, this is the one who drove from the temple the dealers in sheep and oxen and doves. Now he himself is but a sheep that is slaughtered. So, once again, we see them mocking Messiah on the cross. Talking about, oh, you let the animals go. You free the animal, but you can't free yourself, right? Mocking the Messiah, right? The Essene Messiah. It will behoove you to know that Messiah saved the lamb so that you will not eat the dead lamb. And now you got Hebrews talking about you're going to eat the lamb off and Messiah saved the lamb, right? Die for the sake of the lamb for not eating the dead lamb. Last scripture of the day. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your wise company. As seen Humane Gospel chapter 69. As seen Humane Gospel chapter 69. And it reads, it says, Yeshai was also dressed in his own pure white robes without seam and spotless. And Yeshai said unto them, I rejoice greatly to share this love feast with you before I go my way. For here today is instituted the memorial of my oblation for the service and salvation of all. For great has been the rendering qualities of my stay on earth, much greater than any of thee know at this hour. For truly, I tell you, many have been restored to eternal all, 
and many yet shall be. For the Son of Man came into the world and the being of every nature in order to restore each to its original root. For you behold this day the Jews before the pagan Passover ritual whereby they sacrifice the innocent creatures of a higher and eat the flesh of dead animals. Such ones are blind and see not the holy things of a higher, for truth is not in them. I tell you truly, better for such ones that have never come into the world, lest they corrupt the saints of the Most High. But behold, the true oblation, yea, the pure oblation set before you this day. Such was the memorial that Moses gave unto the sons of Israel out from the land of Egypt. But they proved to be sons of disobedience and transgressed my commandments and profaned the pure oblation and sacrificed the demons and left it after much flesh and evil things. But my saints among them did go forth and keep my laws and prove holy to the eternal all who sees all and knoweth the hearts of men, good and evil. Once again, the pure oblation. Beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and scribes, okay? With that being said, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. As we can see, this is the closing of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay, brothers and sisters? Stop eating death in your temples, okay? A little bit of leaving leaveth the whole lump. A little bit of death will still kill you, right? That You know what? I only eat a little bit of chicken. Great. That means the chicken is just a little bit of dead, right? With that being said, I want to say Shalom. I'm trying to bring